I want to state once again that I'm not challenging the IEBC election outcome because I'm determined to be declared president. There is no democratic goal higher than respecting the will of the people to decide whom they want to lead the nation. What we are seeing in this electoral battle is the hidden struggle between the forces of change and the forces of status quo. When Kenya burned five years ago, after an election so tainted that Judge Krigler said no one could be sure who won it, I readily decided to make the sacrifice that was needed to keep Kenya whole. But what I regret is that we did not put in place any mechanism to identify and punish the perpetrators of that election crime, of that crime. Had we done so, the IEBC would not have dared to conduct this election in the criminally negligent manner that it did. Its failure and collapse on a catastrophic scale on the polling day so fundamentally changed the system of polling and the number of votes cast owing to inordinate and inexplicable delays at the polling stations, thereby reverting Kenya to the discredited manual system with all the attendant risks and opportunities for abuse and manipulation which in fact took place. They failed to ensure or secure a free or fair election and no government could lawfully be <coughs> formed by or from the purported declaration of a winner on the 9th of March 2013 to the dishonor of the Kenyan people. Between February and March, the IABC tinkered with the final register severally, and it is not clear which register was in fact used in the final tallying of the votes. On the polling day, officers of a company by the name Ken called EPZ Limited, a call center, were reportedly receiving the results of the general elections and specifically the presidential ones. How did the IABC allow Kencol to co-host both its server and that of TNA, which may have compromised the integrity of the electoral process to, or at the very, or, or at the very least, indicates that the TNA had access to information that should have been confidential to the IEBC alone. This clandestine arrangement of co-hosting databases is not permissible by law and indeed was not disclosed to the public or to us in the code coalition. Despite my agents regularly, regularly updating and complaining to the IEBC about the incidences of electoral frauds, malpractices, and irregularities they discovered during the elections, the IEBC neglected, refused, or failed to act. Electronic voter identification kits were not functioning. Officials and clerks had forgotten passwords. Batteries were flat, and kits were unable to charge, among other impermissible reasons, all of which could have been prevented by the IEBC. This fundamentally changed the system of polling and the number of votes cast, owing to inordinate and inexplicable delays at the polling stations affected, thereby reverting Kenya to the discredited manual system with all the attendant risks and opportunities for abuse and manipulation which in fact took place. I have no hesitation whatsoever in lawfully challenging the election outcome. To do otherwise would be a betrayal of the new constitution and therefore everything that Kenyans hold dear. And it will also be a betrayal of the wishes of the people of Kenya. Your commitment to the rule of law and to peace has put to shame the prophets of doom who were convinced the supporters of the declared or the declared losers of the 4th March 
would embark on a bloody course. The multiple failures of the IEBC, in fact, reflect failures of so many of our new institutions. But the one institution in which all Kenyans still have faith is our new judiciary. It is a faith based on the achievement in the last two years. The new Kenya, the courts have been vested with enormous powers, including the power to curb the unlawful use of the authority by the executive and, of course, the IEBC. I have repeatedly indicated my commitment to respect and abide by the Supreme Court ruling. I invite my brother, Honorable Huru Kinyata, to publicly do the same. His joining me would strike a huge blow for the rule of law in Kenya and would also immediately reduce the tensions generated by this election outcome. Thank you. God bless Kenya.